morning, and welcome to another special episode of Old Men in Chairs. As you see on your screen, they held the second Rochester Summit for Truth and Wellness last weekend. I wasn't able to attend. However, the entire event is available on Rumble. Uh, it's a nine-hour video. I will put a link to that in the, the notes. The problem with parts of that video were that when speakers such as Robert Malone had multi-visual uh, slides and video clips that he inserted in his talk, they didn't really appear very well in the video. The camera was just set up to capture the speaker and not the slides or the video. So I went through and I found a lot of his slides from a prior talk and I found all the videos that he used. I redid uh, his part, broke it out, and enhanced it. And I think it's really a great, great explanation of where we are in this world today. The problem of fifth generation warfare, which is being employed by our own government against us, and how we can deal with it, or at least understand it. I'm just going to give the highlights of this talk right now. The entire speech is an hour and 14 minutes. If you have the time to watch it, I will put the link for that also in the notes. I highly recommend it. But I thought not that many people have an hour and 15 minutes to spare these days. So I thought I would do a condensed version of, his, of the highlights of what he had to say. My goal is not to scare you, okay? I hate fear porn. I hate the weaponization of fear to promote various agendas. My goal here is to educate you. My goal is after I'm finished with this multimedia presentation over the next hour, you will feel that you understand the tools, weapons, cap capabilities that are being deployed against us by our government. It's not to intimidate you or frighten you, but to educate you in the hopes that if you're educated, you can see through the propaganda and you can be empowered to battle the propaganda in your own heart and soul and to help those of you around you to resist the propaganda that is being so actively deployed. Because I'll tell you a little secret. People that are highly educated are among the most susceptible to this technology, okay? So we all think we're so smart. We all think we're smarter than this. Um, but in fact, the tools of psychology have advanced and have been weaponized against you. And I'm gonna show you some examples to help you to understand how that happens and how susceptible you are to it. Because I hope that once you learn that, you will become more resistant, okay? You will be more able to battle it in your own heart and soul. I'm gonna start with this quote from Aldous Huxley in a 1958 interview. The passion for power is one of the most moving passions that exist in man. And after all, all democracies are based on the proposition that power is very dangerous and that it's extremely important not to let any one man or any one small group to have too much power for too, much long a t for too long a time. After all, what are the British and American constitutions except devices for limiting power? So this was the problem. I didn't have this particular slide, but I would have shown it on the screen. So for those you know, watching the original version of the talk, you see a lot of the back of Dr. Malone as he reads off the slide. And of all of these devices, television, radio, etc., are extremely efficient instruments for the imposition of power by small groups over larger masses. Fifth generation warfare in Psy War is incredibly complex. And the more you think about it, the more you engage in it, the more complicated it gets. Okay, this is truly a surreal landscape. This is warfare in a postmodern environment where truth becomes entirely relevant, okay? This is our future now for the next few years. Truth is a complete victim of this. I hope get back to a position where we have integrity and truth has some meaning. But right now in this postmodern environment with this kind of warfare and technology, there is no truth. That's a really scary thought. There is no truth. Those of us of an older age who grew up in a world where we thought there were some truths that were permanent and 
could not be changed, are bewildered by the sudden loss of the truth, of what we always thought to be the truth. And that's the feeling of unease that we all share is we don't understand this new world that's being thrust upon us. There's no actual truth. It's all subjective. Okay? It's whatever those with power and the access to this technology and, and the information matrix can promote. That becomes truth. The composition of warfare is changing. The traditional methods of waging war are evolving. Conventional techniques of warfare are in decline. Opportunities to use kinetic weapons have become highly restricted. Newer tactics and tools of warfare, such as information warfare, asymmetric warfare, media propaganda warfare, hybrid warfare, emergency vehicle noise, are filling the gap. The traditional clear divisions between combatant and non-combatant and between wartime and peacetime have become gradients. We now have forever war or continuous crises, as predicted by Orwell in his classic 1984. If you want to see information warfare in play, all you got to do is pay attention to the headlines right now in the Gaza conflict, okay? What you have is two extremely well-developed information warfare capabilities battling it out on the world stage. Watch what's happening and learn from it, because that is the future. When seeking to understand fifth-gen warfare, you're forced to enter a bizarre, shifting, surreal, psychological terrain. To understand this new battleground, you must first temporarily suspend and then restructure what you thought you knew about truth, ethics, media, information, social organization, business, government, and the military. As you step into this psychological hellscape, set aside any obsolete notions of fairness or rules. This is total unrestricted information warfare. 20th century organizational norms and social activism methods, ergo the 60s, for instance, based on centralized leadership have become outdated and obsolete. Centralized leadership is so mid-century, okay? We're way past that. Over the last three years, Western governments, non-governmental organizations, transnational corporations, pharmaceutical industry corporations, media and financial corporations have cooperated via public-private partnerships. Mussolini would say that's a euphemism for fascism. Okay, that is the definition. To deploy the most massive, globally harmonized psychological and propaganda operation in the history of the Western world. That sums it up pretty well right there. The biggest psychological war in the history of the Western world. We all saw it coming down, or some of us, anyway, saw it coming in March of 2020, and we're screaming, no, no, what are you doing? But it was so well organized, and with the fear porn, it mowed down all resistance almost. It was just a, a few rebels that were saying, no, no, wait. <laughs> but 90% of the people either you know, believe the fear porn or went along with those who believe the fear porn. Gosh, how much damage have they done? ...that you've experienced here in upstate New York and across the United States has been mirrored simultaneously in harmony across the Western world. The buying of influencers, media, comics, singers, all these things that you've seen play out here happened simultaneously across all Western nations. Now, just ponder that for a moment. What organization has the power and the finance to do that? And when you find the answer to that question, you will know who the puppet masters are. Okay, I know that's a question that's been bothering all of us. Now, I believe it's the CIA and the Five Eyes Alliance, and I have various reasons to do that. Fifth generation warfare is a war of information and perception. It's a strange game. This is hard to understand, but it's crucial. The only winning move is not to play. As soon as you engage in any form of media, particularly social media, you become a participant in the battlefield. And you're subject to an enormous, powerful array of psychological manipulation technology, okay? As soon as you enter that battlefield, you become a warrior or a victim. 
and essentially all of us in the end become victims because truth becomes a victim. So that is a very hard concept to understand. The only way to win is not to play. I really would like a better explanation of this because I've been fighting this monster on social media for three years and I feel compelled to do so. I don't know what the alternative is. We don't have a free press very much uh, and if it, we do, it's only through the internet and social media that we have access to the press. No one's going out and buying paper newspapers anymore. I was in that business for a while, believe me, I know. A lot of people don't read anymore. Everything is a video. They're watching most of their time watching TikTok videos or watching Netflix or regular television. So it's very hard to reach people, but this is one of the reasons I started this channel because I realized if there's any hope of reaching people, it's through video. I, I'm not planning to quit. I'm not planning to be a victim. I'm planning to go down fighting on social media on this channel until they ban me. And then hopefully at some point Rumble will attain critical mass for us refugees from controlled media. The basic idea behind this term, fifth generation warfare, is that in the modern era, wars are not fought by armies of guerrillas, but in the minds of common citizens. Fifth gen warfare involves weaponization of information and perception. It targets your existing cognitive biases of individuals and organizations. What the heck does that mean? It has to do with the dopamine hits that you get on social media. Furthermore, 20 20th century organizational norms and social activism methods, ergo the 60s, for instance, based on centralized leadership have become outdated and obsolete. Centralized leadership is so mid-century, okay? We're way past that. Cognitive biases, it creates new cognitive biases. It's different from cl classical warfare for the following reasons. It focuses on the individual observer and decision maker it's impossible to attribute when it's done properly. You never know who's doing it to you. The nature of the attack is concealed. It's leaderless and decentralized. You don't know what is being done to you and you don't know who's doing it to you. No distinction is made between combatants and civilians and there's no rules of engagement, okay? The classical rules of engagement in battlefield operations of warfare that there's a distinction between civilians and combatants is so yesterday, okay? It no longer applies. Soon as you enter that, you are a combatant, as well as, as I mentioned, a victim. So this is a table, and what I want to emphasize with this is that there isn't, there isn't a linear progression, first gen, second gen, third gen, fourth gen, fifth gen. These are more gradients. They're constantly evolving. I've been fascinated since I started talking about fifth gen warfare almost a year ago, watching it evolve in real time, the technology and, and strategies and tactics. All of these are happening in different ways simultaneously globally. So the doctor goes through all the four or five generations of war at some length, but in the interest of time, I'm going to just focus this video on the fifth generation. I do recommend that you watch the full video. And one of the key things about fourth generation warfare is a complex uh, integration of propaganda, often religion or philosophy, together with warfare, with kinetic war. It's still partially about weaponry and, and territory, but it's also about winning the minds of the populace. And in response to that, we took technologies and divisions that had been created in the Second World War to basically confuse the Germans um, with the uh, landing and uh, the ghost army is what it was called. And we continued to develop and advance that technology to full-on cywar capabilities, modern cywar capabilities, that were then deployed offshore against these combatants, these terrorist organizations, so that we can convince the populations that be, were providing the underlying substrate that we were the good guys, that we really were concerned about them. So fifth-gen warfare 
is about information and perception. It's primarily non-kinetic, but it can still be blended. Again, in fifth gen warfare, it is completely decentralized. It is perceived as leaderless, and when operated effectively, the opponent has no idea that this is being deployed on them. That pretty much describes a large percentage of the people of the world. They have no idea of what has been deployed against them over the last few years. And even those who are aware that something has been done are having great difficulty figuring out who done it. The irony is this is basically the type of warfare that Sun Tzu imagined, um, the ancient Chinese warfare philosopher. Okay, it's very much based on that logic. So a checklist, ambiguity of the opposing force, ambiguity of the attack vector, dopamine look, loops, that's that, oh boy, I feel really good, they agreed with me. Okay, that hit. Triggering existing cognitive biases, creating new ones, emerging from theory to reality in the Arab Spring, okay. The Department of Defense loves to test out new technology in skirmishes. Arab Spring was the deployment of Twitter and other social media tools as weapons, okay? Twitter was designed as a weapon. Facebook is an information weapon. Twitter has the technology built into it, and many of these other social platforms, it's all classified. But it can abstract the emotional content of what you're posting. It can infer using validated algorithms what you're feeling based on the words that you're choosing. And it also maps you in a cloud of influencers. And it can direct you know, this, this whole uh, freedom of speech but not of reach. You notice that sometimes you'll post something and it'll go viral, it'll be allowed to run, and other times nobody will get to see it. Okay, that's a trivial example, we call it you know, throttling or, or there's a lot of different words for it. But built into the tool is an algorithm that allows the manipulation of who you're hearing, what you're listening. And behind that is the tools that's, that can classify the emotional content of everybody in your cloud of influence. And so as you're operating in social media and you think that it's just you know your friends and colleagues and your contacts and you're all having free exchange, that's not what's happening. What's happening, particularly when it's deployed in a warfare environment, an information warfare environment, is that what you receive, the information, the tweets that you see are carefully curated so that you're seeing the things that will trigger the emotional response in you that they desire, that is desired by whoever is controlling the algorithm at the time. And you hear what it is that those people think you should be doing. Oh, we should all go home right now. Really, this is a nothing burger. We shouldn't be worried about that. Or you, we should all be really outraged about this missile that hit this particular hospital, okay? That's all algorithmically manipulated. And so in Arab Spring, this was weaponized. Control crowd behavior. You know, we should all go protest in this square. We should all go attack that building, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty scary the ability to control whole crowds of people and get them to do your bidding. Now the thing is that this is also cross-linked with all of your personal database. So they have profiles of everybody that's out there. They know what makes you tick. They not only know what you're feeling and believing, the information that you're encountering, they know what makes you tick. And if you're in, in distance of two cell towers and preferably three, they can locate you precisely in space. Furthermore, that can be uplinked to Gorgon stair data, which is high resolution aerial imaging, so that they know what the color of your eyes are. They know what vehicle you drive. They know who you associate with. You, they know who just got in that car with you. So you can be targeted kinetically. You can be targeted with human assets. You can be directed in whatever direction. You think you know why you're feeling things. But all of that is being manipulated. If you understand that, you understand how these social media tools are weapons. They are weapons of war. The switch isn't always turned on, but it could be turned on at any moment. Gary. Before 4th and Gen, quoting Clausewitz, the famous uh, volume on war, 
Modern warfare between states was a duel on a larger scale, a continuation of politics by other means, and listen to this, with core elements of rationality of the state, probability and military command, and rage of the population. All of those things have been turned upside down now. None of those apply anymore. The classic definition of war and, battle and source for battlefield strategy is no longer valid. Today, the very gener nature of fifth generation warfare is that it's difficult to define. And then I throw in this uh, quote from Arthur C. Clarke, the futurist, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Here's the kicker, okay? And this is the most important part of this entire talk. This came to me when I was doing an interview with Great Britain News, in which now, you may not be aware, but in British media, they have a censorship board run by the government. And if you transgress, you'll get big fines, people have to be fired, and you'll lose your broadcasting license if you have repeated violations. That's the way it works in the UK. And so in this particular broadcast, I had a, a party representing the government that was on the broadcast, and we were in a dialogue position where I would say something and they would make a counterpoint. And my counterpoint colleague made the point that in the UK it's believed that when you have an election, then the populace basically vests their authority to the government, and the government is free to act with the authority of the populace until the next election. And it suddenly hit me like a brick. If in that period, that government decides that it's acceptable to deploy this kind of advanced psychological warfare technology on their citizenry, then there are no more free elections ever from that point on, because with this tech, they control everything that you encounter. All information, your feelings, your beliefs, your thoughts are all subject to manipulation. And whether or not we have accurate or inaccurate voting machines becomes completely irrelevant, because everything that you and you and you think is actively manipulated to support the government's narratives and whatever propaganda the government wants to push out. Sovereignty and personal autonomy in the electorate becomes completely obsolete when a government is willing and able to deploy this technology on their citizenry, which is what has happened over the last three years, by the way. We're living in the Truman Show. This is the most important point. Once the government decides to use this technology against its own citizens, it destroys the idea of democracy and living in a representative republic. Hey, what's this point about how in England they think that as soon as the government's elected, they have what seems like absolute power delegated to them to do what they wish? We don't feel that way in America. We say we have a loyal opposition, and it's our duty to counter the government policy where we think they're going wrong, to support them when they're doing the right thing, which hasn't been very much lately, but a, an obligation to counter them when they're doing the wrong thing. But if they can control the thoughts, emotions, and the voting behavior, of a majority of citizens, then they don't have to worry about the loyal opposition. The loyal opposition will never get to 50%. Very scary world we're living in. He goes on to flesh out this concept and give more examples of fifth generation warfare. So I do advise you to see the whole video, but I'm gonna end it here. I think you've got the gist of it. I hope everyone will spread this message and let it go viral so that people can be better prepared for what we're dealing with.